continuing the papers on breath, Pasi and Fas. Breath three, number three, thought reading. It is the vibrations carried by the breath which become thought waves which carry the thought from one mind to the other. It is therefore that thought reading much depends upon the position in which two people sit with regard to each other. For a certain position makes it easier for the breath to reach than another. Although it is not always necessary that a person must be facing one another to receive thought waves through breath. If the thought power is strong and the breath is sound enough to carry the thought waves, a person, whether facing or having her back turned, must receive thought. The mystics do not only project their own breath and see the condition of their being manifest before themselves, but also they can make themselves responsive to receive the thought waves of another carried by the breath. This receptivity does not only enable an adept to read others' thoughts, but also, to a mystic, the condition of another person becomes revealed by the projection of another person's breath upon his heart. Plainly speaking, souls are likened to mirrors, and two mirrors facing one another become projected on one another one manifesting the reflection of the other. The mirror which has no reflection is capable of reflecting the reflection of the other mirror. In this way, breath enables a Sufi not only to know and see his own condition of life, but also to know and understand the condition of those he comes in contact with. So to reflect on the last sentence, when uh, one is in the midst of circumstances and uh, perhaps all kinds of ideas and, and emotions swirling around, to pause and turn within and breathe consciously, slow down the breath and deepen it, reveals, first of all, one's own inner state. There's an expression, a person doesn't know his own mind or know her own mind. That, that happens when one is just caught up in, um, the, in the maelstrom of all kinds of impressions. But if one sinks down through the focused breath, one can anchor oneself in one's, one's deeper state, one's <coughs> deeper knowledge of the moment. So in that sense, one tunes into one's own true state. There's a kind of uh, condition on the surface, but then deeper down, there is one's actual state of heart. It's, it's hidden under the superficial reactions. So the first thing that clarity of the breath can do is bring you down into that sense of your own actual imminent present experience of life. But then there's a further stage. In that state of transparency and simplicity and awakeness, through that 
calm, one can more and more clearly see the actual state of someone else. Not only what's on the surface, and not only what one projects on that person, because all too often our thoughts about other people have much more to do with our expectations, fears, hopes, prejudices, etc. But through the breath one can get to a level which is much more fundamental, clearing away all of those presumptions, just clearing the, sta- the slate. And instead of projecting upon that person your preconceptions, just like a pure mirror, take in the pure reflection of what's there in front of you. And the medium of that is the clear, calm, pure breath. And what Murshid is saying here is that the breath does have a, a physical dimension to it, but it's not only physical. Again, we have to remember the breath is the life field, and the life field has its multiple layers, including the movement of the air, oxygen and carbon dioxide circulating, but also the electromagnetism of the body, also the flow of photons, and deeper still, the communion that exists at the level of pure intelligence. So these multiple layers within the uh, life field and the exchange, the, the reflection happens within the life field, overlapping life fields. And so it's most palpable at first, especially in direct contact, face to face, even without the visual signal. If you sit face to face, close your eyes, and each of you, or rather taking turns, one emptying himself out and the other projecting an idea or a feeling, you'll find the person who is receiving, if that person really does empty himself or herself out, the feeling will come across. You don't need the visual signal. What uh, what presents an obstacle is guessing or supposing or imagining. One has to leave all of that and just become totally empty and with the inhalation receive what is there. And in this way one discovers a whole realm of knowledge which is gained in a completely different way from what we're used to. We're used to going out and grasping information and this is entirely opposite to that. Just becoming empty and knowledge is revealed. The mirror doesn't have to reach out and grasp for anything. The mirror is just empty and in its placidity, in its transparency, reflections are imprinted. So that's how the breath can work when the breath becomes clear and fine. And then the inhalation becomes the conduit of receiving knowledge and the exhalation becomes the conduit of expressing one state.